Okay, everyone cover your eyes. On the count of three, you're gonna turn. Keep them closed though. Ready, set, go. Stay there, stay there, stay there. One, two, three.
have no Cheers. idea how close we are. I like this. This is fine. Right. What are you drinking? Lemonade. Oh. <laughs> He's hammered. <laughs> We can do a sipper. So a sipper, yeah, we do like a really just like a lot of small drinks just to slow it down a little bit. And then, you know, oh, you just, it's just a lot of small around. drinks very quick. Yeah, it's a lot of small yeah, drinks. Yeah, it's like listening to a Ferris. Just a sip. 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 So how about one to Joel? Oh, yeah. 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 Just a sip. 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 All of us? Just a sip. Just a sip. You, got, you guys got a face. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're all angled. Angle, 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 you guys are all angled in. We're like a V. But I, I feel like I look like an ump. I gotta keep it together, though. You gotta make it together. Yeah, make you even. I gotta handle it more. Yeah, okay. There you go. Right, you're the wedding guy. No, you gotta be the Messiah. I feel like an umpire. Passing.
Welcome everyone. We've come together this afternoon in the presence of God to both, both witness and bless the uniting together of Joel Ine Greider and Ryan Michael Beering into a new family unit. I want to extend a very warm welcome to all of the wedding guests and family members as we celebrate this most sacred event with them. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift of marriage. You have brought Ryan and Joel together in your love to compliment, to comfort, to encourage, and to belong to one another, to walk hand in hand through life together. And so, we pray this afternoon that you will give them much grace and joy as they take this important step and commit themselves to one another in your presence. May you be glorified in every aspect of this ceremony. We ask this in the name of our Lord. Amen. I'll now read a passage of scripture that emphasizes the importance of love in marriage. The passage comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 and verse 13. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice but about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Today is truly a privilege for me. I get, to, I get the honor of joining a pair of great friends in marriage. Since meeting Ryan and Joel, they've become an important part of my life, and I'm excited to watch them continue to grow through their love and marriage. <clears throat> Ryan and Joel, in a few moments, you'll be taking vows of commitment to one another. You'll promise to love and cherish each other until death do you part. And because you are already best friends, I have great confidence that the two of you will enjoy a long and fulfilling life together. First. I'd like to share a few thoughts on friendship. Being and remaining best friends is the secret to a happy marriage. The mistake that a lot of people make is to marry their lover and not their best friend. Feelings of passion are fleeting, but true friends are able to weather all of the storms of life together. With this in mind, I want to give you four actions that will keep you best friends for life. You can remember them with the acronym BEST. First, friends bless or compliment one another. It's important that everyone thrives on. I want to encourage you both to find things about the other, strengths, talents, accomplishments, and praise, praise one another for a job well done. If something is appreciated or well done, say so. Always remember to compliment the other. Second, friends edify one another. That's not a widely used word today, but it means that as friends, you always try to build one another up with positive talk. That's why your relationship and your home should be a safe haven where both of you flee for refuge. Always remember to build one another up. 
Next to blessing and edifying comes sharing. Friends talk with one with each other. They can share their most intimate thoughts because they aren't afraid to be vulnerable. A best friend is a good listener. There's something special about having someone who will listen and give honest feedback. A friend is someone who, even though one of you might have been wrong, is willing to stick like you to you like glue. Always remember to share with each other because the more you share, the deeper your friendship will grow. The final letter in the acronym BEST is T, and that stands for touch. God has created us to need and respond to touch. In a friendship, touch is just as important as sharing. We call it nonverbal communication. A simple hug can say things words are unable to express. So always remember to use the language of touch to enhance your lifelong friendship. You see, it's not enough just to be a husband and wife. To succeed, you also need to be the best of friends. And the way to do that is to bless, to build up, to share, and to touch. Ryan and Joelle, I want to give you both the privilege now of expressing your love and your commitment to one another in front of God and the guests that are assembled here this evening. I'll ask you to turn towards one another before exchanging vows. Ryan, we'll begin with you. Okay. Okay. Joelle. About seven years ago, I had the most memorable summer of my life. As you may recall, we went on our first date where we awkwardly discussed life over a couple of burritos. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, we were spending almost every day together, and I think we bo both knew that what we had just found would last forever. There are two things that really stuck out in my memory of that summer. The first being when I smeared my birthday cupcake all over my shorts after taking a fast turn driving to see you on your lunch break. <laughs> Thank you for pretending to enjoy your crushed cupcake in front of your coworkers. <laughs> The second memory being our camping trip in the Upper Peninsula where we spent a couple days climbing waterfalls. I'm sorry that your face swelled up mid-trip from a strange allergic reaction and I formally apologize for calling you Mrs. Puff while you're clearly frustrated <laughs> with the situation. The real reason that I bring up our first adventure together is because you know that I have a very deep respect for all things natural and wild. Today I am vowing to love your nature for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health for the rest of my life. The famous John Muir quote reads, the mountains are calling and I must go, but now the mountains are calling and we must go. We too. I'm gonna go. <laughs> you want me to hold it? That'd be great. Okay. I'll hold the side. Thanks. Brian, <laughs> I can't say with certainty that I knew what to expect when <laughs> we reconnected all those years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I can say that it certainly feels right to be committing to a lifetime of being together today. Since we first met at the ripe old age of 12 years old, our <laughs> friendship has been one of the most natural and comforting I've ever known. I 100% attribute that friendship to be the foundation that we've built our love upon, and it's why I know our marriage is going to last. I've enjoyed every minute of learning what makes you, you, over these last seven years. Your honesty and integrity are unwavering. Your humor is about as dry as it gets. <laughs> I still struggle to pick up on your sarcasm every once in a while, but I am getting better with time. And when you put your, your mind to something, your determination is second to none. I love that you encourage me to be open to new experiences, even if that means wearing a parka, gloves, and three pairs of socks to bed because you somehow convinced me to camp in the snow. In any case, I look forward to every adventure that is to come. I could not be more excited to love, grow, and evolve with you. I promise to cherish the small moments 
including but not limited to going for a drive in the ever-expanding assortment of vehicles that you own. <laughs> that being said, I promise to encourage you to pursue your passions because that's an essential part of who you are and I love that about you. And while I can't promise I have the stamina to walk across the country with you, I can promise to celebrate with you through all of life's summits and support you tirelessly through all of life's valleys. And last but not least, I promise today, tomorrow, and every day forward, I will wake up and love you with everything that I have. While vows are a verbal declaration of love, wedding rings are a beautiful symbol of what marriage is all about. First, they're made of gold or silver, which is a very precious commodity. Each of you is a precious gift of God to the other. Second, the unbroken and never-ending circle of that ring is a symbol of the commitment you are making to one another before God this evening. Each time you look at the ring on your finger, I hope you will be reminded of the commitment of unbroken love that you are making to one another today. Ryan. I'd like to ask you to place the ring you've provided for Joelle on her finger and repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I take you now. I take you now. To be my wife. To be my wife. Joelle, please place the ring you've provided for Ryan on his finger and repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I take you now. I take you now. To be my husband. To be my husband. <laughs> Today you are demonstrating a one-of-a-kind blending of your two lives together into one. This new and enduring relationship will be symbolized through the pouring of different colored sands into a glass container. One represents you, Joel, all that you were, all that you are, and all that you will be. The other represents you, Ryan, all that you were, all that you are, and all that you will be. As you pour the sand together into the container, what emerges is a beautiful design that symbolizes the uniqueness of your life together. Now that Ryan and Joel have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands, and the giving and receiving of rings, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife, and you may share your first kiss as a married couple. to ask that Ryan and Joel please face the audience. Ryan and Joel be, will be available to greet everyone at the reception this evening. Everyone is welcome to head to the reception hall across the parking lot 
and dinner will be served at 6 p.m. After the bridal party exits, I would, uh, if the first three rows could please be allowed to exit before everyone else. And with that, it is my great privilege to present to you, for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Joelle Beering. That happened really fast. Yeah, I blacked out. Oh. Yeah. But do we, you and me need pictures.
right. Hey, everyone. Before it, <laughs> hey. Um, before the rest of the evening begins, Ryan and I wanted to say thank you to everyone for coming out tonight to celebrate our marriage. Whether you traveled down the road five minutes or flew across the country, we are truly grateful that you all could be here with us today. We'd also like to especially thank our families, friends, and wedding party for all of their support throughout our relationship and for helping us make today such a success. We seriously could not have done it without each and every one of you. So, I'm gonna put this down. Here's to a toast, here's a toast to all of you, to all of our memories, to being here with us today, and to a community that we know will continue to surround us with love and support throughout our marriage. We love you all. Cheers. 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 All right, we'll be running across the right through. Thank you all for coming out to celebrate this uh, gigantic day with us. It's uh, just been a joy to, to see all of you here and, and uh, uh, helping us to, to just spread the love with Brian and Joelle. So I've got two brief toasts uh, that I'd like to offer up today. And the first is in honor of the bearings, Mike and Jackie. I want to thank you for the job you've done in raising such a kind, gentle, smart, and loving young man for Joel, Joel to fall in love with, and to marry today, and to spend the rest of her life with. Thank you also for the way that you've brought Joel into your family and shown her love. Do a job. I knew I was going to forget my glass, too. <laughs> To a job well done, and to the finest families. And now to our daughter, new son-in-law. May your love grow daily. This is a toast and a blessing. May your love grow daily in breadth and depth in breath as you discover new things to appreciate and love about each other, and in depth as you daily express your gratefulness to each other for the love that you've received from one another, and as you express your gratefulness to God for giving you to each other and for sustaining your love in everything that you will face in this life to Joelle and Ryan. Cheers. All right, big round of applause for Tim, everybody. If we can keep your attention for a little bit, we are going to pass it over and keep those applause going for best man, Alex. Hello, my name is Alex Deering. I have the pleasure of knowing Ryan since high school, and I'm pr proud to call him my friend. Our friendship quickly grew through fixing anything with an engine and time spent outdoors. I'm going to tell you about some of my adventures with Ryan. The very first was a 12-mile bike ride through Yankee Springs. About halfway through the trail, on a steep downhill with a sharp turn at the bottom, I didn't make the turn and went over the handlebars. If we look back at this crash to find out where I ran, a t ran out of talent, it was back in the parking lot before we started. <laughs> Some of our next adventures mixed our love of engines with the outdoors. Ryan had an enduro and I had a four-wheeler. Later, Ryan bought a four-wheeler and I bought a dirt bike. This caused a little bit of a problem due to the differences in machines. We always struggled to find trails we wanted to ride. We got out and rode, but it made it difficult. When Ryan finished his Jeep build, I figured we'd all be able to go off-roading or get a burrito. That's until I found out there'd only be two front seats, and I doubt I'm the first pick for a Chipotle burrito run. <laughs> when the opportunity came for me to buy a Jeep, I jumped at the chance. We quickly learned that the only thing more fun than going up an icy, snow-covered two-track with a Jeep bouncing off the rev, limit rev limiter was sliding down the hill backwards just as fast as we went up, with absolutely no control. <laughs> 
One thing I learned was who you call when your 2003 Jetta leaves you stranded on a summer day. Ryan was there to pick us up in no time. Someday I, get to, I may get the chance to return the favor, as Ryan now owns that car. <laughs> Usually, a best man speech does not include apology, but this one does. Joel, I need to apologize for all the trouble I helped get Ryan into. Dragging home a 1985 Cutlass that would eventually take your parking space in the garage. <laughs> Two days worth of annoying heavy equipment backup alarms as we build the building pad in the road to the shed, and any future things I will help get him in trouble with. <laughs> Throughout the years of knowing Ryan, I have found him to be hardworking, dependable, and caring. Joel, I am sure you'll see these traits in Ryan. I'm sure you see these traits in Ryan and will continue to see them throughout your life together. Joel is the perfect match for Ryan. She tackles the mountain biking, rides shotgun in the Jeep, and can handle the rustic camping. Also supports his dreams. Together, Ryan and Joel have laid the foundation for a grand life together. Friends and family, I want to thank you for coming out to celebrate Ryan and Joel tonight, and I wish you all the best for you to come. All right, we're going to continue on. That's my bad. We're going to continue on with co-maid of honor, Katie. Give it up for Katie. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have been absolutely blessed to know my sweet Joelle all the way since the early summer of 2000 when the Grider family first moved to Camp Fall Lake. One fateful day, my stubborn five-year-old self decided it's going to be a great day to race my neighbor Tyler on our bikes. Super shout out to my sister Kayla, who I'm pretty sure was supposed to be watching me that day and was not. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I took the corner right in front of the grider house, I ended up crashing while Tyler ran to get his dad since Kayla wasn't going to help. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Grider came running up and comforted me. They told me all about their daughter, who was about the same age as me, and told me to come back when I felt better. So I showed up at their doorstep later that day, and I never left. <laughs> as somebody that has had Joelle in her life for over two decades, I'm here to tell you that there's about a million reasons why Ryan is so lucky to have such an amazing and kind-hearted life partner. However, if I go over five minutes, my mom will smack me, so I'm going to limit to about three. Ryan, start taking notes. <laughs> Reason number one, hear me out. Ryan, you are never going to be the reason why Joelle is running late. I need everyone in here to understand that we Googled it and Joelle and I grew up 350 feet apart. This girl would text me and tell me that she's on her way and she'd be in my house in like five minutes. It's a 30 second walk. Where did these five minutes come from? Clearly anyone that knows Joelle realizes that a Joelle five minutes is a regularly scheduled 30 minutes minimum. So Ryan, the next time y'all are on your way to something, don't even look at the time. We know, it's not you. <laughs> Reason number two acts as a warning. One of the best parts about living near any grider is that not only do they know how to stock up on chocolate, but they also understand that chocolate is the cure for everything. You feeling sad? Get some chocolate. You feeling a need to celebrate? Get some chocolate. Need a snack? chocolate. So Ryan, while that's a wonderful mindset for a life partner, take this as a warning to make sure that you're keeping track of the stashes in your house. You better have some chocolate chips in the refrigerator and a Costco-sized stock of brownie mix in the pantry. Uh, my third and last reason on a more serious note is that Joelle is a great life partner, um, and that goes with her unmistakably huge heart and her desire to fix everything that she can. If there's one thing that I know more than anybody, it's that Joelle doesn't let any of her people go through anything alone. If you're having a hard time, she's gonna sit with you and do her absolute best to fix it, even if it's out of her control. I think this pairs so perfectly with Ryan, who has the same need to fix everything as long as it's phys physical. If it drives or has a motor, he's your guy. If it has feelings or emotion, Joelle's your girl. 
And I just can't imagine a better match than that. Again, I could go on forever about how amazing Joelle and Ryan are, but I really don't want my mom to smack me. And I know that Joelle is ready to drink and dance. So to very quickly wrap it up, I just want to address each one of you. Joelle, you're my best friend in the world. You are my best friend in the entire world. We've been through literally every milestone together since kindergarten, and I'm so stinking proud of the woman you've grown into, and I'll never be able to truly express how overjoyed I am that you have somebody as amazing, supportive, and caring as Ryan. Ryan, I've lived basically my entire life referring to Joelle as my other half. You have always been an amazing friend, and it makes me so happy to be able to say that you're her other half. Welcome to the family, my guy. And I hate to break it to you, but you are officially stuck with Joey and I, so welcome to the Streetlight Crew as well. <laughs> if everybody could please join me in grabbing your drinks, and let's toast to the fearings for a lifelong of happiness. Cheers. Ryan is 
Mr. Wonderful Mom could please exit the dance floor. Ryan, you get to stay there and you get to go grab your grandma. Grandma Beard. Oh, there she is. Give it a round of applause for Grandma. And her dad, Joelle and Tim. Big round of applause for Joelle and Tim, everybody. So, yo, woos. Let's keep it. We're gonna big round of woos for Joelle and Tim. We'll do that <laughs> for their first dance together.
right, big round of applause for the bride and her dad. No, sorry, they brought the cruise. I forgot, I forgot we were doing that. So one song for me, I already forget what we were, we were switching it up with. Okay, uh, Joel, you can, oh, you're already staying there, that's wonderful. Where's your groom? All right, this, oh, we're gonna need a lot of woos for this one. This is their first dance as a married couple.